leaders of tomorrow, your one-stop platform for anything to do with the entrepreneurial world. I'm Sananda Jai Seelan. Our leaders of tomorrow, I think tonight is someone who's doing something which is very important and crucial when it comes to the medical and the healthcare space. I'm in conversation with Dr. Srini Babu Gedala. to really talk about your specific project and the work that you do maybe we could ask you to introduce yourself uh, to our entrepreneurs and just you know talk about your entrepreneurial journey and the highlights of that before we start thank you for your time and giving me an opportunity to discuss uh, about uh, the opportunities we are going to have and the uh, future of the translation of scientific and healthcare information into indian languages uh, coming to myself, I'm Dr. Srinababu Gedala. I did my uh, postdoc from Stanford University as well as PhD and MTech from Andhra University. The problem I faced during my MTech as well as PhD is access of the literature. When, I, when I'm doing my PhD, I faced a lot of difficulty in getting relevant literature for my research. So that is the reason I started the open access journals that gives the support to the scholars across the world I got the support from National Institute of Health as well as the Welcome Trust in the United Kingdom. Uh, almost all uh, uh, scientists from the Human Protein Organization, HUPO, that is the initiative to make the scientific information accessible to the scholars. Uh, based on that, we started some journals when I'm doing my postdoc at Stanford University. That is the majorly relevant to the proteomics as well as the diabetes, cancer, that I did my PhD. Well, that is a uh, subject, those, those are the subjects I did my PhD. Based on that, uh, we got very good support from across the world to support my open access initiative, as well as to give the information free to the scholars. Because until that, the literature is only to the few universities that too, that is a subscription based. As a young scholars at the time in 2006-2007, to pay the public, uh, articles access, that is to access the, each article, that is, the cost is approximately 50 to 60 dollars. That is uh, not available with us. So as a scholars like me, I used to travel to access the literature from Vishakhapatnam to Hyderabad at that time, at least once in a week or two times in a month. So the same uh, thing I explained when I got Young Scientist Award at Human Protein Organization in 2007. Uh, uh, to the panel of the scientists, got Young Scientist Award in 2007 from the HIPO. The uh, reason I got the Young Scientist Award is I applied the mathematical modeling technique for early stage identification of diabetes. So uh, that is the research for that. I got the Young Scientist Award. And the, for the same research, uh, I applied for the cancer also. Whatever the uh, mathematical modeling technique I applied for early stage identification of diabetes, uh, the same technique uh, should be applied to the uh, prostate cancer. Uh, that is the research I call uh, uh, Stanford University is required. At that time, Stanford University called me for that uh, uh, position and I went to Stanford and applied the same mathematical modeling technique for early stage identification of prostate cancer. Sure. I understand that you are picking up healthcare and agricultural information and translating that to local languages. Now this is something that no one has done before, something that no one has even thought of doing before. What is the reason that you said that I want to do this? You were talking about your theses and you know how you were trying to find material. Did it really start from there? Yes. So whatever the information is available to the public on the internet is completely in English. And 
whatever uh, that is also authenticated information in the research uh, journals as well as in the common public uh, like uh, common public platforms like wikipedia so now what we would like to do is whatever the information required to the common people even the illiterates also would like to give that information to their local languages like uh, hindi tamil telugu kannad malayal as well as marathi and bengali so these are the major indian languages i hope about uh, top 10 languages in india this information majorly healthcare and agriculture information common uh, common information whatever the minimum information required to the common public that we would like to translate to indian languages i hope some of the few uh, uh, websites are also available they are translating but that is not an authenticated content but what we are doing is an authenticated content because we are running the journals from last 15 years and we have the content with us that's about uh, uh, 20 to 25 million pages content is there all that content is peer reviewed and healthcare updated information agriculture ad updated information that information is as per the standards of the scientists that information we are uh, simplifying as per the common people requirement so okay. in future in future if anyone wants some information about the diabetes so they can uh, they can ask to their mobile what is the diabetes and uh, what is, what is the minimum requirement uh, 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 to minimize the uh, diabetes complications? What, what I have to do? So those, uh, though, uh, if they're asking in audio also, the website is going to give the answer in audio format in their local language. That's what we are developing now. What have perhaps been the strengths that you've been able to bring to this project, Dr. Kedala? Yes, yes. So as I, uh, I discussed, we have about uh, 25 million pages of the content, healthcare information as well as the agricultural information and scientific information we have. Those copyrights are there with us. That information is an authenticated information. Uh, about uh, 150 scientists supported that information to be pub uh, uh, published with us. So that information is there with us. That is an authenticated information. From that information, that is a scientific information, whatever the uh, common people requirement is there, uh, uh, common public requirement with reference to the healthcare as well as the agriculture, that information we are, we are simplifying and we are giving it to the public. So that is the strength we have. And with reference to the uh, now, IT uh, offices we have here also, it is, uh, we have the offices at Chennai and uh, at Vishakapatnam, at uh, Hyderabad, as well as at Delhi. So all the you know, translate, all the uh, IT offices, we have the seating capacity of approximately uh, 10,000 seating capacity is there. And uh, we have, we are establishing our uh, offices uh, across all cities uh, in in future also like uh, Noida and uh, Bhopal and Varisha. So all this we are establishing. So this is an additional uh, strength we have and uh, the manpower, whatever the local manpower is required, that is also we already recruited about uh, 20 sure. to 25%. So the remaining we are going to do it over a period of time. Uh, could you talk to us about any support that you're perhaps receiving, you know, from the government, whether the central government or the state government, when it comes to a project which is so critical and time consuming and, you know, there's just so much that goes into it. So are you getting any sort of government support? Uh, so far, there is no direct support, but we got a uh, number of seats allotments with reference to the IT uh, business promotion scheme of the government of India. Uh, through that scheme, we are going to provide about uh, 6,000 employment uh, uh, in next three to four years. So that is the uh, uh, only support we got from the government of India, Ministry of uh, Information Technology, IT and uh, uh, Communications Department. So under that scheme that is monitored by Software Technology Parks of India, we are creating the additional employment 
and that to the rural people and that we want because the uh, once the information is translated to the other languages we need some uh, review of that information also apart from the uh, scientists as well as the doctor specification we need uh, some sort of a review is required for that we need a local language graduates like rural people so uh, based on that we got some support from the uh, government of india to create the employment that is the only support we got but sure. we are expecting the additional support in future with reference to this uh, information translation because it is an important uh, project is required to india as well as to the respect to state governments i'm going to slip into a short break on that note dr gadala we're back in just a moment Welcome back. You are with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow, and our icon in the hot seat tonight is Dr. Shreeni Babu Kerala. I must ask, uh, what's the sort of uh, business model, or the revenue model, or the return on investment, perhaps, uh, that you're seeing on a project like this? So uh, the ROI is majorly based on the. uh advertisements as well as some um, third party uh, support systems to the local hospitals as well as the uh, agriculture uh, related information so okay. that is the only thing the uh, so far roi is from the advertisement only like the, it is going to be the local google so i repeat it is going to be the local google because the google is only to the uh, up to uh, english information but ours is a, lo a local language information that is only to specific to the healthcare as well as the agriculture and whatever the information is available in the google is anyone can publish but whatever the information is available with us is an authenticated copyrighted information and it is uh, authorized by the global level scientists as well as the doctors and Uh, healthcare and agriculture professionals so this is only the advertisement it's like a, it's like a google local google you know you were talking about people in rural india and why the this project is so critical for that but a second part of that question that i want to ask you is uh, how critical perhaps is this project in translating really of these documents and this information uh, as far as rural employment is concerned yes so as i discussed uh, the uh, whatever the employment we are going to create the projected employment is about 40000 to 50000 is all to the local graduates especially to the uh, local language who has some knowledge on the local language like uh, hindi or, or telugu or marathi or any other local language respect to states uh, what uh, we are translating the healthcare as well as the uh, agricultural information so the, this is an additional advantage to the respect to state where we are going to establish the additional offices we are gi giving the employment to the rural people rural people they have the a very good knowledge on the local language so we are recruiting them with uh, salary of uh, the uh, cities like people are it is going to be more so this is going to be add on value to the uh governments who are going to support to us in future with reference to their particular language translation of course partially as i discussed partially supported by the government of india up to 6000 seats we are expecting little bit more from the uh, state governments where we are going to establish the additional offices at their respective states for translation of this healthcare as well as the agriculture information to their languages I'm uh, curious to understand, given what I can only assume are uh, the complexities when it comes to a project of this kind. Is anyone anywhere in the world doing anything of this sort, Dr. Gedela? 
so so far one uh, chinese uh, firm has done that is the only uh, uh, i think project so far executed in the world there is no other people are there because to, to do this type of project they have to have a authenticated information so far very few publishers are there in the scientific as well as the healthcare information very few publishers are there those publishers are well established old publisher but there is a subscription based but very few people are there in the open access category like us we established about 15 years, 15 years back so uh, that is the reason so far this type of project was not done by anyone in the world we are the only people after the chinese of course we did few content translation in other foreign languages like uh, germany japan korea uh, other languages also we did uh, about 3 years back now we are doing in india because at that time the indian languages usage is not that much uh the uh, like the german people as well as the japan and uh, spanish people so uh, where, where now the indian users are more that is the reason we started in india also if the information is available in the local language then the understanding capacity is is also is going to be more that is the one of the reason if you if you check any of the high technical people originates from korea or german or china china or japan their technical skills are more compared to the others because their studies are in their own language so if the if you are able to understand uh, the content and uh, uh, in their mother language then it is easy to grasp the technicality involved in it so similarly if the same information whatever the technical as well as the scientific healthcare information is there with us if you are translating to the local languages it is going to be useful to enter india of course recently government of india also announced the technical education is going to be in the local language just for them also it is going to be used for a lot of the project we are initiating you now uh, as we are you know winding down today's interview the biggest opportunities and the biggest challenges that you have seen uh, during your professional career just talking specifically about this project what can you tell us my uh, advice to the uh, 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 users uh, as well as the uh, uh, watching people is try to understand what you are reading if the information is there in your own language then your understanding capacity is more so whatever the project for initiating it is going to the game changer to the countries like in india and the government of india also is recognizing the importance of uh, local languages so that is the reason some of the uh, recently aict gave permission to some of the engineering colleges as well as the, some other technical uh, colleges to start the technical courses in local languages so for them this project is going to be useful as well as to the common people or common public the information what we are giving in the audio format as well as in the text format so to ask the uh, uh, information in the audio format the respective persons may not be the literates even illiterate people also they can ask so in that way the this is very good opportunity uh, to the uh, other upcoming entrepreneurs in this field uh, uh, along with us of course this is a huge project for others it is not possible because the copyrighted content is required that is available to the people uh, uh, the publishers like us so if anyone is interested to support this initiative as well as to join with us please share your uh, your thoughts uh, with us and uh, 
I'm open for any other collaborations. I wish you all the very best for that. Thank you so much for taking the time for the show. Thank you. Completely out of time on that interview with Dr. Srini Babu Gadala. If you have any feedback for us, our contact details on the screens as we speak. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.